Welcome, adventurers. Here's what happened last time on the Incorrigible Party. Sharing the info Shakara and Mia learned from Geneva, the party decides to check the Elder's Keep for any sign of Alamar to steal his eagle cane in an effort to prevent the Ceremony of Night. At the Keep, the party sees no sign of the potential future Lich and they learn that the remaining elders Geneva promised to rally in their favor had not been spoken to at all yet. After invisible sleuthing in the other elders' studies once more and finding nothing, the party leaves the keep, voicing concerns about Grimby being in danger because of the stored elixir on the Rising Three. Talks of using valuable spell resources to contact him are dismissed as they agree to visit Alamar's potential ritual spot. And now, on with the show. Back outside of the city, and kind of the, the loose directions that Geneva gave you. Basically, moving westward, right around the perimeter of the city on the outer, outside of the wall. You, you continue for uh, about an hour or so, you know, coming all the way down. And then another maybe 30 to 40 minutes until you uh, round the, the, the western corner of... of the city itself, right? The, the outskirts of it. And again, there's this, this large stone wall. It's kind of very curved in many places. It stands about 30 feet tall as you're kind of keeping it to your right. And on the western side of it, you see that as you continue uh, north now, the, the side of the cliff, again, it's still elevated, right? And that, that slight elevation uh, that the whole city rests on, which allows you to see basically all of the city from the very bottom. And the, the amount of, of land you have between the wall and now this cliff that drops down now hundreds of feet to the ocean gets narrower and narrower uh, until you get to a section where it's only like a five foot path, just barely enough room to get along the outside of this wall. And could you all do a perception check for me, please? Oh, I am on fire today, Matt 20. 22. Not in this rain, you aren't. <laughs> 14. 14 also. Uh, could you also all make me a survival check, please? 10. <laughs> 10 also. 4. 20. Uh, okay, so Falzerin, you ha- maybe having a little bit of trouble on this slick. So th- it's like like the rest of the island, very barren, and it's just like a, a, almost like one large stone slab that is now getting very slick in this rain. Those that rode te- roll 10 and below, you kind of stumble a little bit along the edge of this path, and those with a perception of 15 or higher get a glimpse down to the ocean and see the, the amongst this storm as well as the wind is also picking up. The waves are just crashing against the very bottom of this cliff. And you see just the the small, now of course small from this vantage point, what looks like a section of a, of a surfaced sub-ship down way below. So it seems to be traveling south along the island's edge. And standing back up, you can continue down this trail. Hmm. Yeah, I would tell yeah, you guys. I, I would relay that information as well. Is it, is it Grimby? Is it the one you guys saw earlier? Uh, I don't. Would we be able to tell? You could. Uh, no, you would not be able to discern it. It does. Yeah. It does look very familiar. Right. Uh, but you are just so basically you're seeing the top of the closed lid. Yeah. You're getting this bird, this direct bird's eye view on it. So you don't see any. Uh, you can't see the sides of it at all, right? To make out any maybe other types of distinguishing features, especially compared to what you saw on the sub that the t- uh, Shaft and Falls are and fought uh, under the water. Right. Uh, so it is very difficult to discern whether or not this is the Rising Three or that same sub. We may want to consider painting the name on the sub. <laughs> that's, that's a very good thought, Shakara. <sighs> that's good. I have, a, I have a sneaking suspicion that this isn't a friendly ship here. I think the Rising Three is probably right where we left it. This is a different one. Better hope so. Uh, let's keep going. I don't want to stand here and end up at the bottom of this cliff. Let's go. 
As you continue for uh, another 20 or 30 minutes moving north, you come to a section of this path that seems to have crumbled away now. And there's about this 30 foot gap from where you now stand and the continuation of the path. Again, this the wall of the city itself to your right now seems uh, in, in this crumbled section running flush with the, the drop, a drop off of, 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 the, of the path. So we can't get across this section. You can't uh, strictly walk across it right now, no. I imagine I could toss Shaft and maybe Fulzerin. Why don't she fly? And I have my ring of jumping. I could make it across. You want me to use my one time a day to fly across right now? Oh, I don't know how many times you could do it. You can't, you can't just fly when you want to? No, I can't. It just drains me of my energy. I have to rest before I can fly again. I don't know if I want to risk my life trying to get over there just to see if there's something on the other side. I will jump across then. Yeah, we'll, we'll stick here. Yeah, I, I don't okay. know if I, if I trust being thrown across. That's, that sounds extremely dangerous. Okay, I, I will use my ring and I will jump across. You can make the full 30 with a bit of a run. I believe it triples your, it would triple your long jump, right? Is that what it does? Yes, yes. My long jump is 17 foot horizontal. Okay, yeah. So that's without using the ring, right? So you could easily get across it. So I go back to where I jump across the chasm. And you very easily make it across this minuscule 30 foot gap <laughs> compared to the effects of your, your, your mighty Dragonborn legs in combination with your ring of jumping. What would you like to do now on the other side of this path? It just looks like it continues. Uh, now about a hundred or so feet uh, ahead of you, you can see where it, it begins to widen slightly and uh, where the edge of this westernmost wall of the city is, where you would presumably be able to turn eastward, turn right, and kind of get around back to the section that is directly north of the city. I will sneak up to where the turn is, hugging the wall, and then peek around. All right, roll me a stealth check then. Uh, stealth, that's, uh, oh, I got disadvantage, shit. 12. You get up to the corner and looking around it, you, you see that the, the path kind of continues. And now, from once you've turned, the, the ground itself, the, the path widens even further. And it just continues to open up. Now you're, you're almost looking at like what would be like a cone, right, from your, from your vantage point. You know, like the, the earth itself kind of getting wider and wider. Still with the wall that continues. And it does look like it begins to get a little uh, mountainous here. Uh, there is some elevation in the terrain as, as, the, the, as it opens up. Uh, but you don't see anything really but the path that continues now eastward. How far? It, it basically goes about as far as you can see. Your, your, your full uh, visibility is kind of limited in this storm as well, uh, where normally you would be able to see like, like two, two miles in clear, like flat kind of terrain, right? Uh, but you, you can probably see upwards of, of a couple hundred feet and uh, within that visibility, there doesn't seem to be any, anything other than the path and the wall and um, more of this barren terrain. But I feel like this is the spot that Geneva was talking about. Uh, she, she mentioned um, the, the cliffside at, at the northernmost point. And that's not where I am. Well, you uh, are at the, you're basically the north, northwest, right? You're at the northwestern, more. so so basically right where you are, actually on the other side of the wall, is immediately the grounds of the Elder's Keep itself. Okay. So I would need to walk this entire distance, and then that would be potentially where she said. Yeah, possibly. How long do I think it'll take me to do that? Could be another half an hour or so. <sighs> Crap. Okay, um, I'll turn around, look at the others, see what they're doing. What do you see? It's looking for you. <laughs> I see nothing yet, but this is not the spot that Geneva had said. 
It'll take me some time to get there and back. Shall I go on? I'm really worried it's a trap. I feel like you shouldn't be going alone. Do you think we could... Can we use a rope to get... I don't know. There's nothing to tie it onto around here. How far down is it? From where this has fallen away. It looks like a, a few hundred feet down. It's very, very far down. How many How many D10s yeah. would that be? <laughs> <laughs> a lot. A lot of 20. D10s. Mechanically speaking, metagamingly speaking, uh, you're sure that it would max out the amount of falling damage that I would have the roll to deal to you if you were to take Fallsy the plunge. <laughs> just splatter. Oh, man. Well, what the heck? Wouldn't it be nice if this, the land hadn't have fallen away right here? <laughs> <laughs> well, we, there was probably a way to just go inside the city and go over the wall. Yeah, maybe. Can you, I, that could have been an option. Yes. <laughs> can I inspect the wall? How tall is the wall? It's a it's a thirty foot high wall. Oh, that's pretty high. This area is opposite the Elder's Keep. You could jump up. Well, that's right, it's just opposite the keep. That's gonna say you can jump up on the wall, lower down a rope, and we can climb up at least get on to the other side of the wall. But could we walk along the top of the wall? Do it does Falzer know what the top of the wall is like? I don't think you uh, would really know, no, like you've never been up there, but Yeah. Uh, it it's a fairly thick wall. I mean it's most likely a, a few uh, feet thick. So if you were to get up top of it, you could absolutely try and walk along it. At minimum, we can get back over and in. Yeah. Yeah. Fall the correct way. Shakara, I wonder if you could jump up with a rope onto the top of the wall and we could try and climb up. How tall did you say the wall was again? 30 feet. You can you can run and grab that high with your ring. Yeah. I was just wanted to make sure my rope was long enough. Oh. <laughs> Yes, we could try that. Uh, are there protections on the wall? This is Heraklion, probably not. I I don't know, Shakara. Not that I'm aware of, but it's possible. Jump up there and find out! You're 60 feet away from me now! <laughs> I've been walking back. And it's I've raining! I've been walking back. <laughs> I wasn't just standing there yelling yeah. at you. <laughs> Falls are basically whispering to her. Come on, Shakara, you can okay, do it. Okay, well, I'll walk back closer to them first and then jump, try and jump to the top of the wall. Then your high jump is, again, tripled, so what uh, do you have that calculated to? High jump is six feet, so that would be 18 feet, plus I'm six foot tall, so that's enough to get me to be able to grab on, right? Since so you can reach up and grab something 15.3 feet off the ground. Normally. With a, ru- with a running start, yeah. Okay, yep. Yeah, definitely. This ring and jumping again, coming in very and handy. And then without a running start, 12.3 feet off the ground. Okay. You are able to get up there and, and get a hand on the edge of this wall. Why don't you make me athletics to, to pull yourself up? Oh, good. I have a good bonus on that. That's 16. Okay. You are able to get up and onto this wall. And you see that the, the top of it is not completely flat. It is uh, angled slightly maybe a 10 or 15 degree angle so it's almost like uh at the top of it is forming this right angle a very similar shape that the island itself takes actually but you are up there and for now steady on your feet i will lower a i will walk over to them to their side of the hole and lower a rope down who is climbing up first (laughs) i'll go and i'll take the rope and put it around my waist okay not tie it off, just hold it with both hands around my waist. Okay, so you could potentially let go of it and it would fall off of you, basically. Yes. Okay, so with Shaft getting up there, how much do you weigh, Shaft? 35 pounds. Yeah, Shaft is very easy to get to pull. Like, you could pull him up that rope, no problem. Okay, so I'll sort of wrap it around me and then I'll help climb. Okay. Uh, what, what do you want? A s- acrobatics or? Athletics. Athletics? 15. All right, Shaf, you are up on this wall. Who's next? I'll I'll go next. So I'm I'm 155 pounds. <laughs> Make me uh, an athletics, and if Shakar is helping, uh, Shakar can aid, and you have advantage. I swear I'm not cheating. That's another natural twenty. 
<laughs> wow. Uh, I don't think I have an athletics bonus. So 20. <laughs> you are also able to get up. Last but not least. 15. And Mia, you do successfully with, again, Shakara's anchor pull yourself up and the four of you are now on top of this wall and you can see now of course immediately to to your right right on the inner part of this wall is the the keep itself and it's about like if you were to try to reach out and touch it it's about 30 to 40 feet away and now just below you is is the 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 concrete uh bare grounds of of the kind of the perimeter of this keep i want to see if anybody can see us if i can see anybody that might see us there's nobody in this little open courtyard section. I mean, in fact, there's nothing out here. It doesn't look like it is uh, a place that is well-traveled at all. So we got two options. We can go down to the ground on the other side, walk to the middle, and then do the same thing and go over. Or we can try to walk on this wall. Let's just keep walking. How, how sloped is the top of this? <laughs> It's about a 15 degree slope. 10 to 15 yeah. degrees. Does it seem not too safe bad. to walk on? Well, the four of you managed to get up here and get stable uh, and are able to stand on it fine. But it is raining very heavily and it is getting um, slipperier by the second, basically. Let us move. And if I fall, I die. <laughs> well, not, a, not if you fall to the right. If you fall to the left, you're out of luck. <laughs> yeah, it's true, yeah. Is the fifth? Which way is the fifteen degrees uh, leaning towards the key? Towards the outside, towards the. Oh no! Wall. So it's the wrong yeah. way. Oh, no. Lean what right while you're walking? Yeah, just lean to the right fifteen degrees, and you'll compensate. So. <laughs> we got about a half hour walk on this wall. Let's go down. Oh, I thought we were just going the thirty feet on this wall and then back. I'm I'm not able to picture this very well. I guess. I mean, I don't want to go back down because the whole side unless. It, it curves off and it's no longer on the cliffside, right? After the 30-foot open section, right, where Shakara jumped, it, it does begin to widen slightly. Okay. Yeah, so I thought we walk the 30 feet and then we get down to where we Perfect. wanted to yeah, be. Perfect, yeah. I think we can pull that off. Okay, great. You can all... Uh, so, uh, Shakara, are you just going to be at the top, like, lowering them yes. down now? <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'll be the last one down. Okay, well, Shakara, can you make me uh, just a, a strength check then? Ooh. Lie. <laughs> Don't lie. Like, uh, saving throw kind of thing, so I would get my own. Bonus. And athletics. Damn. And athletics check. Eight. <laughs> eight. <laughs> so with an eight, everybody but Shakara falls down to the path and over the side of the cliff and dies. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right, I stop. I also. I stop recording. I also. <laughs> yeah. I could be guiding myself this whole time too. Uh. What a lame. Thanks, cleric. <laughs> Come on, someone's got to tell the cleric to touch herself. Okay. I touch myself. Should come naturally. <laughs> so, okay, so what I am going to do here is I'm just going to roll a d6 and randomly assign uh, as as Shakara is lowering down Shaft uh, about at the last 10 feet, the rope kind of stutters and slips and Shaft, you're just going to take only one point of bludgeoning as uh. you hit the path below you. Okay. Shaft, are you all right? Sorry. I'll live. The rain has made it slick. I know. How are you getting down, Shakara? That is a good question. She's going to lower herself down on the rope. <laughs> Mia's going to ca- catch her. I will uh, hold on to the top and lower myself down as far as I can stretch and then drop. Okay. Ooh. Why don't you roll me uh, an athletics check? Please not a critical fail. <laughs> well, it wasn't a leg. critical fail. <laughs> that's an 11. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's... You got at least above a 10. So you're able to <laughs> land on the path below you after uh, hanging down, and you are also down safely. <laughs> Let's go see what's around the corner up here. Yeah, the northernmost point, she said. Yep. Yeah. We'll just keep on going. Just keep swimming. We're not going to meet Geneva back at dusk. (laughs) No. No, you are definitely not going to be able to make that now. I wonder if there's another way to get through this wall. 
if if it is, there is in fact a a secret place that Alamar is planning on using north of this of the keep on the other side of this wall. More than likely, but we're not going to find it now. Could just be a wild goose chase. There's no way Alamar could make that trek with that hole. There could no. be a portal. Who knows? Well, let's, let's go. Keep walking. Yeah, we're walking and talking. You round the corner and again get into this section where it starts to widen, open up into this cone shape. And for another about three to four hundred feet, the path does parallel the the city's outer wall. And again, the terrain to your left here is getting more and more elevated, and there are uh, kind of these these small, uh, maybe 40, 50 foot peaks and valleys uh, to your left here. And then suddenly the path veers to your left, north, in amidst these, this elevated terrain. And if you continue down it, yep, it leads into. Uh, so 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 now you're traveling directly north, right? And you can see as uh, this path is kind of winding in amongst this elevated sections. You you to to your left, you now do see the cliffside again as it seems to have cut in now towards this path. And you can see out below the, the ocean below once more. And it opens up into this large flat portion, maybe like a, a 60 feet, 60 foot radius kind of thing. So a very large section. And in the middle of it, you see what looks like some type of stone altar or some type of stone, like flat, raised flat surface and flanking either side of it, you see what looked like two like sets of armor seem to be just standing there. Uh, large, like large shoulder plates and uh, closed helm. But you do not see any sign of Alamar in this open space. Or is the armor moving? They are still. Do a perception on them? Sure. Oh, yes, I got, I got a different die, so that was much better. That was a natural 20. My perception is 23. 14. 15. So you all see that in the, the, like, the closed visor of their helms, it's just, like, darkness inside. There doesn't seem to be uh, any, any sign of something being, like a, like a, there's no head in it kind of thing. It looks like the helms are, are empty. Falzern, that's not what invisibility looks like, right? No, but I have a bad feeling about this. This is... <sighs> how's, how's the armor standing up by itself like that? Shaft, you, you remember the gargoyles that we had some dealings with before? Yeah. This reminds me of that. Well, we could always cast Shatter. Why don't we, uh... Sort of... Can... Are they within viewing distance? I guess they can see us, right? If if something was looking out of that suit of armor, it could see us from where we are. Yeah, you're like 60 feet from each other kind of thing. Um, but I, I assume you haven't quite stepped directly into this clearing, right? No. You're no. kind of still amongst the, the narrow path in this elevated, uh, like the hills kind of. So I'll take out my one of my arrows and I'll hold it up to everybody. I'll go, eh? Maybe we should see if it moves if I hit it with one of these. Uh... Well, if it's if it's not hostile yet, that's likely to make it hostile. I if this is a place this guy's gonna do a ritual for a lich, I don't think they're gonna be friendly. If no, they're not. But we could hide and wait to see if anyone else comes, and then fight these as well as whoever comes. That's right. Okay, true. Hmm. Should we just should we just walk out there see if they attack us? Well, shoot them. Surprise them. If I shoot them and they come run towards us, we got a sixty foot head start. That's true. Anything would probably come running at you if you shoot it, though. As Falzarin said, if it comes running at you, I'm gonna fight it. I'm not running away. What we do know is that Geneva told us. There might be something north of the Elder's Keep that would be a suitable place to do a ritual, and we've stumbled across this, so that is adding up. Now, 
If Geneva were on Alamar's side, would she have told us about the exact place that seems to be set up for Alamar's ritual? I don't think so. Okay, fine, but we don't need to think about that right now. We need to know what to do with these two guys right in front of us. Let's fight them. Well, Alamar's not here. I I don't understand why it's we have to It's not nightfall yet. I know. If we take care of them now, there's less to fight later. Can we tell what time it is? Since it's raining? It's it's yeah, you've been out here for a, a couple hours now and you know, since when you left the this the center, you had about 4 until the sun would have started to setting. Uh, so you're you're pretty close, and it's getting quite uh, quite dim out as well. Tell you what, if you want to walk up there and say hi, I'll sit here with an arrow pointed right at him. I would like to investigate this altar. All right, I'll stay here, and I take my arrow out, and I'll sort of line it up. All right, Mia's got her hammer ready. I'm going to cast Mage Armor. <laughs> Okay. And as you approach, they don't appear to move or react to the four of you. I I want to keep an eye on them, but walk up to the altar to investigate it. Uh, You can make an investigation check. 17. So this altar looks very plain, and it looks like it's just a large uh, stone, like rectangle, basically like a slab of stone that has been set here and it looks the top of it is kind of very rough and it is soaked from the rain of course but other than that there doesn't seem anything to be uh any distinguishing features about it is it in the middle of the clearing it is yes are there any other paths off the clearing so where you've entered picture it as the bottom of kind of this circle right uh and you're now in the center at the top of this circle this the top semicircle is the edge of the cliff so you are now at the the northernmost tip of the entire isle of Heraklion so it doesn't look like there are any other paths or or avenues in which to uh, move away from or back into this clearing no caves close by or anything along the rock you want to walk around the perimeter and look? yep okay we can do a perception 18 you don't see any uh, any culverts or cave entrances uh, along the perimeter of this clearing. There is nothing here. I will, seeing that nothing has happened with these suits of armor, I, I'm going to walk up cautiously as well behind Chikara and Mia and take a look around as well. And I want to, I'm going to be looking very, very closely at these these suits of armor whenever I get close to them. Do they look li- like anything that looks familiar to me? Yeah, you can roll an arcana check. Uh, 13. You have read about something similar, especially now that you're you're up to them, and, and they don't look like a standard, they're not like a standard set of, of plate armor, like something like Mia wears, right? Uh, they look much more, uh, they're, they're a little more sleek than that and seem to be a little uh, con- constructed differently than as if you had put a set of armor on, like a mannequin or something like that, right? It doesn't look like there are the traditional seams and functionality of a normal set of armor, but you do recall in your readings that uh, these remind you of uh, shield guardians, and you do know that uh, often, traditionally, a wizard can create one of these and they are bound to an amulet or an item that the wizard has which allows it to control it and their sole purpose is to uh, protect the bearer of that item. Can I go along the cliffs and look down in the water to see if I notice the ship again or anything? Okay, yeah, yeah. You can make another perception. Ooh, ten. <laughs> no, you again kind of see the waves uh, crashing below into the very bottom of this cliff, but there doesn't seem to be any other signs of uh, any other shell ships. As you are now, con- compared to where you first saw it, uh, much further north to... to basically, you, you guys moving northward, you're traveling kind of in the opposite direction in which the ship you did see appeared to be moving as it was moving south. Well, these, unfortunately, 
these look familiar, and I, I suspect that either Alamar or some other powerful magic user has has summoned these, and they will do that person's bidding to protect them. So while they may not be hostile right now, if, if their owner comes back and they're a foe of ours, we're going to be fighting these sort of animated suits of armor. Okay, let's get rid of them. How are they controlled? There's probably some sort of... Might be an amulet, might be something else that they're tied to. Which the owner will have on their person. Did not you find one in Alamar's secret library? But would those amulets do anything? Like, it, I can't... Bring them out, let us see. Okay. Would I know about these these things reacting to the amulet if you produce it? Does that typically do anything in, from what I know of them? You don't have any of that. I'm knowledge. not sure. Okay. So I'll, I'll reach in and, and take out one of the amulets, see if anything happens. As you pull it out of your bag and hold it in your hand, nothing happens. Is there a button on it? I'll hand it to Shakara. You're certainly welcome to take a look uh, for I'll yourself, push Shikara. on all of, all of it and shake it around. Where's the other one? There was two. So I'll I'll reach in and grab the other one out of my bag. And Shakara, you don't find anything that de- depresses or anything like that. And falls in as you produce the second one again. No, no change in the shield guardians. Do you need to have it on? Put it on my neck. Okay, nothing happens. Is it? Are these uh, amulets magical? Did you check? Yeah, they they didn't seem to hold any magic shaft when I inspected them. Ah, then they probably don't control these guys like you say. I I would guess not. That is disappointing. I'll hand you back the amulet. I'll go up and touch the armor. Just lightly lay a hand on it? Yep. Okay, it's cold to the touch. It's slick from the rain. But other than that, it doesn't give any uh, reaction to your touch. When I hit it. <laughs> you want to make an attack? With my fist. You hurt your knuckle. Ouch. <laughs> uh, see, that's just about eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you, you kind of deliver a glancing blow in the rain here. Yeah. Nothing. And, uh, yeah, you see nothing from your, your light near strike. Do we? All right. Should I destroy these things or Do not? Do we wait here or go try to meet Geneva? There's no way we'll make it back to Geneva now. So we took a path north away from the wall. Did it look like there was any path that got really close to the wall um, before it left to go north? Yeah, the before it, like I said, before it turned north, you were basically you were still adjacent to the wall. I'm suspicious that there's a way to get through that wall, a secret passageway. Would your wand show it? It would, yeah. There you go. Yeah, maybe. Um, yeah, I think I will walk back down to the wall and and uh, pull out my wand of secrets and use it where the path meets the wall there and see if I can find anything. Right before it veers north? Where would I think that that, that correlates to as far as on the other side of the wall? Like, what part of the keep? Oh, the the amount of... You estimate that where the path veers is much, like, east, far east than the keep, like, past Oh, the I see. Okay. So it would be, like, part of one of the suburbs of Heraklion. That's right, yeah. All right, so yeah, I, I will activate the wand and see if anything reveals itself. Within 30 feet of you, your wand does not detect any types of uh, traps or, or secret passages. Fudge. Big old fudge. Did you tell us what we're doing? Because we could walk further. Yeah, but how are we going to know like what's what's this place compared to any other place that we've walked along? Like it's only got a 30 foot range and it's two charges it's only one charge now oh it's not activated for like a certain amount of minutes no okay it's, it's a one time shot do we have anything that 
Alabar owned on us. Yeah, definitely. I mean, those amulets were his. The journal was his. All right. I want to see if I can use locate object. How 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 long do we think it's been or it is going to be until uh well, we have no idea what time this thing's going to happen. Are you saying to Mia what you're trying to do? Yeah, I, I said, you remember that thing I said I could do earlier? If he's within a thousand feet of me, I can find out mm-hmm. that he's coming. I don't know. I don't know if that really is going to help us much other than just give us a little heads up. Yeah, I can, I can locate creature. But I don't know if locating object might be better if he's protecting himself with magic. I might not be able to locate him. Question is, what are we gonna do when he shows up? So we're we're standing here, the rain's pouring down. We're by the wall. Yeah. We're looking at each other. It's it's getting dark, I assume. And so, what are we gonna do when Alamar steps out of the door? Is it is is it? Do we still reason with him? Or are we gonna try to stop this guy from becoming a lich? Or do we even care at this point? Do we care if he becomes a lich? I mean, I'm not going to die to try to stop this guy from becoming a lich. I mean, the thing is, he's teamed up with Isabella, and Isabella is slowly killing Falzerin. Is she not? We have to We have to do something to try and, to try and stop this from happening, but I, I, would, I would love to reason with him. I, I don't think he's... He's going to be able to be reasoned with. We shall try reasoning first. Okay, Shaft, try locating him. That's fine. Uh, all right, I'll try. I'll cast. Uh, see, describe or name an object as familiar to you. You have the sense of direction, the object's location, as long as it's within a thousand feet of you. If the object is in motion, you will know the direction of its movement. Are you going to try and locate his cane? Yeah, I can do that kind of apparel, jewelry, furniture, tool, or weapon. It will last for ten minutes. Casting. You currently do not detect Alamar's cane within one thousand feet of you. I don't. I don't sense that he's around right now. Hmm. But if he comes within range of the next ten minutes, I'll let you know. Should we move closer to where he may be? Sure, we can walk along the wall closer to where the keep is. Yeah, I, I suppose that's an option. I, I, I'm really... So once we walk ten minutes back towards Heraklion, what, we just keep going? Give up? That does not mean we are giving up. No. I just can't believe Geneva did this to us. Geneva may be at the West Gate right now waiting on us. Yeah, well, she's wrong. Alamar's not here. It's it's not time yet for him to be exactly. here. Exactly. I'm just going to walk for around for about 10 minutes and if, see if anything uh, pings if I detect him. Okay, so do you want to like move back down along the wall, like closer to the keep? Yeah, basically. Yep, just okay. walk 10 minutes that direction. And for the duration of that 10 minutes as you get closer and closer to the keep, you do not detect the cane's presence within 1,000 feet of you. Yeah, I, I don't feel him. I don't think he's going to be... He's not around this area. We have about an hour to nightfall. I would uh, wager that, yes. And this storm is uh, incredibly intense around you. Thunder is kind of roiling through the sky. and Cracks of lightning. So, I do have a suggestion. Maybe we go up to the ritual area and you can tiny hut us. I was going to say, we've got an hour... We could take a short rest and and try and regain some spells, some spell slots, and prepare ourselves. Huh. The problem is if Alamar isn't coming here. I mean, it, it, this looks like it's probably the place, but if we made the wrong bet, can we not tear apart his altar and his whoever's armor armored warriors? This is just kill him now. We can try. We don't know they're his. Why not to be safe? If we could find the mechanism to make them work, it would be nice to have them on our side. I don't really think that's how they work. 
but... All right. I think I'm going to use the last charge of my wand back around the altar and those shield guardians. Let's see if that shows me anything. And expending the last charge on your wand of secrets, you do not detect anything around this altar. Okay. Well, can you tiny hut us with a... with When you said you can sit down and like do it for like 10 minutes or something. And... I, I certainly can, yes. Yes, I'll, I can perform a short ritual and and create a, a safe and comfortable hut for us to, to stay within and... And leave these things here just to kill us later? Uh, first off, this thing, I think you told me it could protect us, right? Yes, and, and we'll be camouflaged. No, the hut, yes, but I'm saying these armored men things, they're just going to kill us later? Just leave them? What does everyone think? Should... Should we try to attack them right now? I don't have any idea who they belong to or what they're here for. I mean, if you push them over the hill... I feel like not that long ago you were all on my side saying that they might attack us. Well, they might. Exactly, so why would we take our chances? Well, let's push them over the hill then. Okay. I'll walk over, put my hands on them, and go, get the other leg. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, can we move them? Yeah, those the, whoever's wanting to push, you can go ahead and make a strength check. I, I'm going to try and <laughs> I'm going to stand back and just watch <laughs> to see what happens. Uh, With my plus two, I got a three. Yeah, I got ten. Uh, I rolled a 19, so I, add, I just add my strength modifier. Uh, Athletics. Okay, so that's a plus six, so that's 24. And as Shaft and Mia kind of don't get Five. much purchase on the one they're on. I don't know if uh, all three of you trying to push one of them at, at yeah, the same time. Is this what's one. happening right now? Yeah. Well, as the three of you are pushing and putting your hands on uh, the one of them, it reacts to your touch, and we can roll initiative. Now you've gone and done it. I wasn't about to just leave them there to hurt us later when there's more people around. She has a point. 20 on initiative, but not natural. You did create the tiny hut, right? No, I did not. I thought he was doing that while we moved them. Well, you attempting to move them did not take ten minutes. Ugh. Uh, Falzerin got a three. Sixteen for a shaft. Twelve. Is it just the one that reacted and woke up? You're about to find out. <laughs> I suspect it will not just be the one. First up is Mia as... As you have the three of you have your hands on this one, uh, you're able to the three of you are able to make it stumble back five feet, and it reacts to your touch, and you're yeah you're up. Okay. Um, when, if I use shatter, do I hurt friendlies with it? If they're caught in the radius of it, I. Yeah. So is there a way to put a ten foot radius sphere around the thing without? Touching you, shaft. you choose the point where it originates, right? Yeah, is there a way to yep. choose a point? Okay. Sure, so, you got space behind it to, to originate it from. So yeah, I'm going to choose a spot behind the armored guy so that I'm not hitting anyone else. And I'm going to channel. So he needs to make a constitution saving throw. With disadvantage because he's made of metal. Yeah. It has to be f- my constitution save is 15. It fails. 3d8. I don't have to roll because I channeled, so it gets max damage. Oh, dang. That's legit. So that's 24. Chapter up. So these things haven't attacked us yet. They just, as we pushed it back, it sort of steadied itself and moved, right? Yeah, you see how its kind of fists raise up and clenched. All right, I guess I'll attack. I'll use my bonus action to put Hunter's Mark on the uh, one we're standing next to. And that would be a 20 to hit. That hits. 14 points of damage. Do my second attack. 14 to hit. That one is a miss. Okay. Then I am going to use my movement and run back 30 feet 
or sorry, whatever I get here, uh, 25 feet, but I have uh, a feature called Escape the Horde, so opportunity attacks against me are made with disadvantage. Okay, and it will lash out at you as you try to retreat. That is definitely a mess. And as it lashes out at you, narrowly missing, it turns on Mia and makes two fist attacks against you. Uh, well, that's a 16 and a 25, so only one's going to hit. Well, and I can use my Wrath of the Storm. So when he hits me with an attack, I can use my reaction to cause him to make a deck saving throw. Uh, okay, good. So it deals you 10 bludgeoning, so he's you're going to use that reaction then? Um, yeah, so I'll use Wrath of the Storm, so he makes a deck saving throw, DC 15. Oh, he gets a 15, it just makes it. Half damage on success, so I still roll 2d8. So he gets 5 damage. Alright. The second one, again, looms up to Mia. So its, it's first fist it does miss, and it's rearing back again for a second strike on Mia. I will use my fighting style of protection to impose disadvantage on the attack. And the second hit also will miss. Nice. And Shikara, you're up. Okay, I get two attacks. I will pull out my sword and attack the one we were trying to push. That is a 15 to hit. That is a miss. Okay, um, and I'll try and hit it again, and that is a 24 to hit. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, and I will... I'm, I'm annoyed we've been out here wandering around and I don't know what the hell's going on, so I'm going to smite it also. First level smite, that is... Oh, that's not very good. Ten points of damage. So a bunch of ones is what that was. You're good to stand your ground where you are? Yeah. Yep, I'm going to put myself in between the guardians and anybody else that it might go after. Yeah, you and me are now kind of sandwiched between these two shield guardians in front of this altar. Falzer, and you're up. All right. So I'm going to reach into my um, gonna reach into my bag and pull out a small rock, throw it on the ground in front of me, and I'm going to use catapult to launch it at the one that everyone else has been attacking, the, the one that they were trying to push over the edge. So you have to make a save, a uh, deck saving throw. Ooh, it's only a five. All right. They are not very dexterous. That is very convenient. Uh, 18 bludgeoning damage. Not Ooh, too bad. Good hit. You good where you are? Yeah, I want to keep my distance from both of them. Back to the top with Mia. So, can you refresh my memory? The one that I shattered, how much damage has been done to him compared to the other guy? You see that it, in its chest armor, it's got nicks and gashes in from where weapons have made contact. Um, so I'm going to cast Thunder Wave. Well, he got a 21. So he doesn't get pushed away from me. But he takes half of 2d8. So that's 11. So half of 11. Shaft, you're up. Well, unfortunately, I've used my Ring of the Ram this morning. And wore that out, so uh, I have to go back up. So I'm going to go in and uh, attack the one that I was attacking before. So I'll make my movement first. Oh, crit! Awesome. Sweet. All right, and I got uh, Colossus Slayer on top of that since he's been damaged. Twenty-seven points of damage. Oh, Jesus! Oof. Good job. Wow. Second attack. Man, I wish I had two attacks. 18 plus 7, so... 25, so... 16 points of damage. Okay, good job. You see, it's just after these blows, that chap is running out, its chest plate is almost come, like as if it's come unhinged, and it's peeling back, like opening a, a can of sardines as the tin is starting to coil and, and, and twist away from his body. And back to these shield guardians, though, the, you see the, the the one that Shaft just rained down upon, that twisting, it, it, like as if it seems to, on its own accord, unfurl back into place. Oh, no. And that's our show. 
If you're not already, be sure to follow us at Incorrigible Par on Twitter, Incorrigible Party on Instagram and Facebook, and you can go to incorrigibleparty.com for world lore and PC information, and we've recently started adding some maps there as well. Incorrigible Party is generously sponsored and made possible by Critical Hit Design. For any of your design needs, visit criticalhitdesign.com. All ambient sound and music is provided by Tabletop Audio, and our intro and outro music was created by Josh Jarvis. You can reach him at jamesmercymusic at gmail.com. Happy adventuring!